Seriously, you hear this seat creaking? That's just me going through the parking lot. Man, I kind of feel bad for laying the haze on this thing. This is a 2004 Lexus SC430. One of the, uh, well, I'm just gonna be frank with it. This thing was a giant colossal failure for production for the Toyota Lexus Motor Group when it was produced. Uh, really cool concept, good body lines, but it just absolutely flopped when it hit the market. That being said, these are, uh, they're owned today by those who are few and far between. And the people that own these cars love these cars. The SC430 series of Lexus is powered by a 4.3 liter V8 internal combustion engine. These, uh, these cars were kind of, I mean, hopping in, they're not horrible vehicles on first impression. They were kind of ahead of their time with some of the features and they were kind of behind the time with many of the features in classic Toyota fashion. There's, there's a thing with Toyota Motor Group is where their, their, their creature comforts and technology is about a decade and a half behind the other automakers. And that's one of their cost saving strategies for production is they don't put a lot of R&D into the latest and greatest little gadgets. For example, you're gonna find no wireless phone chargers here. There's no USB connectors. This thing still has a tape deck. Look at that, it has a tape deck. So like I said, they weren't horrible cars, but they weren't great cars. And when they hit the US market, they did not sell like hotcakes. So the examples that exist left over today are few and far between usually you find these cars in two kinds of conditions they are either clapped out ragged out and complete garbage or these were a sunday fun car and they lived in a garage and only came out once a week and occasionally you'd find them parked in front of the local golf course so anyway this particular example has approximately 65,557 miles on the odometer uh, customer states it's been pulled out of the garage for its annual drive down to the repair facility we're going to uh we're going to go ahead and test drive this we're going to do a full-on inspection on it take a look for things that uh, may require some repair and uh, we're also going to get this thing back up on its maintenance schedule so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to take this thing out on the road we're going to get a feel for how it runs and drives and shifts and brakes and handles and all that good stuff we're gonna check out all the features on the vehicle, make sure everything's functioning like it should be, and then we'll bring it onto the shop, lift it up, do an undercar inspection, and then we're gonna go from there. So, stay tuned, because this is gonna be a very good video. Happening Z Hood. Let's get her out on the road here and put it through its paces a little bit. See what we're working with. It drives nicely, very smooth. Feels like a Toyota. It's got decades of solid engineering behind it. But again, it failed miserably once it hit the market. This, this particular car did, this Lexus. I don't think that their target audience was really looking for underpowered sports cars at the time of production here. All right, we're pulling up to our bridge. Let's wait for a break in traffic. We'll give it some full throttle action, apply some load to the engine. We're gonna see what this thing's power band feels like. On the way down the bridge, we'll come to a stop at the other light, check the brakes. We'll see if it pulls or vibrates or does anything, uh, anything out of place while stopping. And we're off. Full speed rolling into full throttle now yeah they're not horribly slow it's got some scoop to it and brake lights there we go well acceleration felt good shifting felt good braking feels good it's not pulling either direction no massive vibrations or anything like that I'm not hearing any noises Get it right into the shop and perform the visual inspection section. Oh, what is this? Trouble in the median. We've got state patrol out. And a Kia turned around backwards in the 
in the grass there. Okay. Now, one of the drawbacks, and you guys may have noticed it while we were driving, uh, you will see here that this is a uh, retractable hardtop convertible. And we could hear every creak and groan and rattle and all kinds of stuff out of this thing. It's a very, very noisy interior. Again, that was also one of the drawbacks on this car. See, convertibles tend to be creakers anyway. They make a lot of noise because their chassis suffers from a lack of structural integrity because they don't have that roof up top to provide uh, torsion resistance and flexing resistance. And the soft top and the hard top convertibles, they just tended to flop around a lot. And because of that, you got a lot of creaks and groans and noises out of the chassis. And in this particular instance, on this build of a vehicle, we have all those chassis noises inherent in the hard top convertible style, as well as a bunch of noise on the interior. Everything in here makes noise. If you look at it, it goes, it makes a creaky noise. I hear the back seat back here making noise. I hear my seat making noise. I hear the console making noise. And that's just with uh, normal driving procedures. Alrighty, back at the shop. Let's get this thing pulled in to the service stall and we'll rack it up and take a look down below. Hmm, hang on, I, I spy a wife unit. I saw you lurking over there. What are you doing, darling? I have a question. This is your mandatory video appearance that I Hi, force mandatory. you to be in. Yeah, what's up, baby? Hey, um, can we accommodate an F350 long bed for a brake fluid change? Yeah. Fluid change? Okay, yeah. Lips are big enough. Uh, I'll roll around in the dirt. I don't care. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do it. All right, cool. Absolutely. Thanks. Yes. All right, let's get this thing racked up and inspected down below. Right about here yeah, looks good. Parking is the auto. Yep, so we heard all the creaky, rattly interior dysfunction on this particular vehicle. We saw some of the fancy features that it came out with. It's got good looking trim, stitched leather, nice faux wood and everything. It's not a horribly built car, but uh, it's lacking in a few, uh, few luxury areas, which is what this car was sold to was the luxury market. Anyway, powering down. Pew. Oh, the hood didn't make a pop sound feel cheated you know and again i don't mean to like totally rip on this car its reputation does precede it i'm just kind of following up on popular opinion here so i have nothing personal against these lexuses except well everybody hates them i'll prove it hey dave you recognize that lexus over there what do you think about those things lexus that particular that, that's a, uh... the that's the sc430 you know, a little sports car. It's a glorified Toyota, right? Yeah, that one, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're not feeling too hot about that either. Yeah, but nobody likes this car. I'm sorry I'm sorry to say, just nobody likes this car. I mean I really hate to roast on Lexus that bad, but I mean it's not a Volkswagen guys. It's not the new Beetle, it's not an SSR. It's 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 just a Toyota. But they tried, they really did, they really did try. And they, you know it it's it's okay, kinda. A little bit wanting on these wheels, but you know, it's it's okay. There, there, Lexus. There, there. You're good. We still love you. All right, let's see what kind of power plant they gave us on this beast right here. Yes, in typical Lexus fashion, we have an engine compartment covered in plastic, so we can't really identify much of what's going on here. I do believe there's an engine down there somewhere, though. Some quick action with a 10 mil. We'll get some access to this engine. We're going to find it. You know, it's funny, this V8 is the size of uh, GM's popular V6. Now, like I said, we pulled this thing out of the garage for its uh, annual trip to the uh, the automotive shop for some maintenance and, in and inspection. And, kind of right off the bat, staring at me in the face, I'm looking at a, a worn out serpentine belt. I'll get you guys in real close. We can see there's a bunch of uh, cracks occurring. Yeah, right there. See how those cracks in the belt face? Yeah, that's no bueno. This is probably the uh, original unit to the vehicle, that belt there. That's gonna go on the list of recommendations. I can tell this car has been up north before. It's got that surface patina of a little bit of rust. Yeah, definitely a northern vehicle once, uh, once upon a time in its life. Okay. 
Looks like we got a newish diehard battery. That must have been from when we pulled it out of the garage last year. It's a little loose. That's a little not loose, okie dokes. Fluid inspections, let's see what we have here. Just some power steering, that looks typical. We're gonna call that original to the vehicle. Check our engine air filtration element. It only had two connectors connecting it. And what we have here is an old, dirty, nasty, very clogged up k &N. Look at this thing. That is jam-packed full of fun right there. Wow. Let's see what happens here. Watch this. Oh, that's bad. Look at that. I'm not even going to clean this. We're putting a new one in it. Okay, recommend air filter. That's nasty. Okie dokes, brake fluid. Guaranteed this has been in here for a while. It's not black, but I bet that's the original. Let's see, we've got some evidence here of crispy critters that have moved in. Uh-oh. They had their food and their toilet in the same place. You're supposed to separate those two systems. Yeah, right there below the mouse toilet, uh, there's a transmission fluid dipstick. Let's take a gander at that fluid condition here. Let's see what we're looking like. Yeah, a little dark in color. It's not smoked, but it's been there for a while. Keep in mind, all these fluids are 20 years old. If they have not been replaced, at 20 years you'd think you might want to do that so we're probably going to recommend the royal flush treatment on this gonna need an air filter it's here for an oil change oh let's see needs a belt let's check some coolant are we hot in there caution something in japanese no habla espanol Okay, coolant looks, that's the pink. That's Toyota pink, so that's factory coolant. Again, 20 years. It's probably acidic at this point. It's not low, so we don't have a leaker. This is good. Wipey blades. Let's take a gander at our wipers here. Make sure the ends of them are not torn up and they're not. Those look fairly decent. Okay. Anyways, got the rack all set up. Let's go ahead, run this thing up in the air, and we will continue with our inspection. While this thing is on its way up, I'd like to take a quick moment to ask of you to consider subscribing to the channel. That way, you do not miss out on any future content. Plus, it's free, and it really helps us out. Thank you. Moving on, in a moment of shameless self-promotion. Lexus moving on up. All righty, back at the top. Let's set her down on the locks right here. Okay, definitely a northern car of some sort. It's been exposed to some uh, some salt, that's for sure. We've got some a uh, little bit of rust stuff flaking off right here. Look at that. It's not horrible. Maybe. I've seen worse, that's for sure. A little bit of rust on the diff. It's all surface rust. It's not like rotted through or anything. Okay, brackets. That's kind of rusty. That's a little rusty. Looking for leaks in the suspension. Checking out the brakes. Yeah, mechanically, this, this car, uh, it, it looks to be pretty sound. Now, my guy wanted a brake fluid exchange on this, but I'm, I'm actually very afraid to uh, try to crack these bleeder valves open. You see all that rust that's built, on that or built up on the valve right there. Trying to take this thing loose, uh, it could actually break off in the brake caliper, or if I get it loose, the, uh, the hole of that bleeder valve might be all gummed up with rust, and it may not actually flow. So yeah, that's one of the, the risks of working on corroded northern cars is sometimes fasteners don't do what they're supposed to be doing. Moving on up front, we see a very similar pattern of corrosion here. Bunch of rust right here on the bleeder valve. A Little bit on the caliper. This business over here on our tie rod. Control arm's got some, uh, some surface corrosion going on with it. 
But again, we also do not see the presence of a bunch of leaks, so this is good. That's just water. No worries on the water. Here on the left front, exact, oh, something's broken, look at that. I have found a problem. That's kind of a big problem. What happened to this, and how did it break? And where does it go? Yeah, this thing's just dangling. This is a ride height sensor right here. And it appears to just be dangling from the uh, connector over there. Let's check the other side and see if we have a ride height sensor on our right front. Uh, that's a negative. So it looks like there's just this one. Hmm, where do you go? I'm confused. Okay, so let's go with what we know. The linkage is gonna bolt on here, right? That's where that's supposed to go. So if that goes there, then this thing can only go oh, right there. That's the bracket for it. So this bracket has rusted through and broken off and yeah, it goes, it's gonna go just like that right there. And then this is gonna connect to the control arm down here. Oh, that's pretty tight too, look, yeah. This ball and socket joint right here has become seized up and does not move. Yeah, that's not okay. All right, so we're probably gonna need a, to replace this ride height sensor and the bracket. That might be fun to find, but that's, uh, that's definitely uh, an issue going on with this car. So our guy wants fluid services, oil change, brake fluid, transmission, maybe a rear differential which that's also gonna be super fun because I don't know if I can get uh, get these plugs out of this rear diff. Yeah, that's looking pretty nasty up there. I mean, I suppose I could get it with a chisel, get under that, uh, that plug right there with a chisel and then walk it out that way. I'm sure the threads are okay. It's just getting these to break loose. That could be a problem. So the corrosion may be preventing preventative maintenance. Yeah, look at that. The transmission drain plug is like a whole size larger now. The rust has caused massive corrosion and that is no longer a six point fastener. Now it's just kind of round. That's not gonna come out. Nope, never again. Okay. Well, let's go with what's obvious, staring at us in the face. I'm gonna write it up for this uh, ride height sensor business right here. We're going to write it up for the fluids with a clause that uh, I potentially will not be able to service any of the fluid systems just due to the amount of rust and corrosion that's uh, down under this thing. A little bit deceiving from the outside. I did not think I was gonna find what I found down there, but it's, uh, well, it is what it is. So let me go get this thing written up. I'll bounce it off my, uh, my vehicle's owner here and we're gonna see what they want to do uh, with this particular Lexus. All right, folks, check this out. We have a new previously loved ride height sensor for this Lexus SC430. I had to acquire this unit from the land of eBay. That's a used auto part because the new auto parts are not locatable. Now, having said all that, the astute amongst you will recognize the fact that this car is no longer on that lift over there because it's been about a week. Like I said, I had to go on eBay to get that uh, component and then I had to buy it and then I had to order it and then they had to ship it and then they had to bring it to us and then I had to unwrap it. So now we're going to install it. So we are now moving on. Uh, in the meantime, over the past few days, when you guys were not looking, we did manage to get the fluid services complete on this particular Lexus. So the only thing we are lacking at this point is that ride height sensor. Now, you would think that that's gonna be kind of a cut and dry sort of repair situation. However, it will not be. Because if memory serves, the little bracket that attaches to the control arm that this piece of linkage bolts to was broken off and still attached to the linkage, but it was not attached to the control arm. So we're gonna have to either engineer a new bracket and weld it on or drill some holes or use some tape maybe some JV weld, you get the picture. So we're gonna have to figure out how to attach this to the control arm once we get that unit 
installed in the vehicle. So let me get this wheel pulled off and we will get to it. Okay, NASCAR reverse mode. Let's get these uh, multiple wheel locks disconnected. It has spline drives and then it also has an actual lock. So there's two sets of keys that come with this uh, particular Nexus. These ones, you gotta make sure they engage properly because if you hit these with the tool and they're not fully engaged, it will break the little key surface off inside of the tool and renders, it will render that tool useless. And then, uh, then you're up a creek. That's not okay. All right, let's go ahead and maneuver ourselves on in here a little bit for a better view on what we were trying to view. So hanging out right down below. Man, this thing's got some rust in it. Here is our damaged and nasty ride height sensor. Let's just go ahead and unplug this. First things first, we need to go and compare this to the uh, unit that we bought. Make sure that it's correct. If I can even get it out of there. Please come out. Come on. The connector does not wish to release. I heard it snap. Come on, you corroded flipping thing. Ah, there, got it. Okay, so. do some comparing and contrasting here. It appears the connectors are the same. Now these uh, housing bodies, this housing body looks a little different, but we also have to take into account that this one is bent up and broken off. The tabs are still bolted to the vehicle. This one, yeah, this tab goes over here. Kind of a different looking part number. I'm not sure how consequential that is. Our little tie rod business linkage thing, that's the same. And the new unit moves around and this one is seized up. Tighter than the snare drum. Hey, I got the little ball joint thing loose, look at that. Okay, I do believe this component that I have will suffice. So what we need to do now is get the two mounting bracket bolts off, recover the fasteners. Then I need to get the little piece off of the arm that's on this control arm here. You see that little stud? That's what's supposed to bolt the other half of the bracket for the linkage to the lower control arm. And that's broken off as well. So I think I might just have to start welding stuff together. Okay, we got a quarter inch drive ratchet here coming in, flex head, 10 millimeter. This, uh, my only concern here is that these little bolts are gonna wanna break off. Oh, good. That one turned. Let's check that other one. Sweet. We have breakaway action. This is good. Got it. Yeah, that's one of our nuts, bolts, synonyms. They're not really synonyms. Their function is synonymous. Uh, uh, nut and bolt is not a synonym. Is it? I don't think it is. Words. Okay, second bolt is out. This is good. So now, I need to fetch the uh, little bracket business off of this piece of the control arm down here. I'm hoping this is gonna come free as well. It had better. Come on, I'm pulling. Ooh, it turned and stopped. As long as that little tab there on the lower left corner stays in place, this should, this is gonna work here. Should, better, but I need these pieces. I have to weld them together. Come on. 
taking forever. Oh, slippage. Reset. Got it. Okay. This is the piece that we needed to recover. So now, let's go over back to the bench. So let's see. This might, uh, this might work. Or we'll have to take her to the vise. Sweet. Fortune favors me in this particular instance. The uh, ball and socket joint thing is so seized up that the threads came loose on the stud. Excellent. Now I need to figure out if I can nano weld this little piece of bracket right here. I need to weld this piece to this piece. It's gonna go like so. Yeah, just like that. That should be fun. Can I weld it? I don't know. Okie dokes, we're over in the bench vise and I have the bottom section of this bracket in the vise and that's holding it flat and level. And then I've got the piece that needs to be welded kind of sitting flat on the top of the vise. So what I'm gonna do is come in here with some pliers hold this piece in position and then we're going to come in with the MIG and put a bead on the end and another bead on that other end, bend it so it's straight and then we can go through and then weld that all back together. I've already cleaned up the weld surface on the uh, the grinding wheel, or the wire wheel rather, to try to eliminate some of that uh, oxidation from the surface in order to make this a, a good clean connection. Okay, let's find out here if this little idea of mine is gonna work or it's not. Let me get in here with the with the stick. Bright lights. Safety squints engaged, please. Okay. Right about, right there. See that, see the little wire sticking out? That's the spot. Got a little more aggressive with that one. Oh, look, my part came out. How about that? I'll re-clamp it. So let's get it back on. Let's get this side again. Let me redo my wire. Need the wire to be super short. Okay, there it goes. Now, I may have been uh, welding that to the vise. Let's find out. That last bead could have caught it. Let's see here. Yeah, we're good. That's okay. Fire. She's on fire. Sweet. Okay. That business is attached, reconnected, and repaired. This is gonna be, this is gonna work, for sure. I believe that that is not, uh, not horrible, that'll do. Okay, good to go, let's go get this thing bolted back to the vehicle, and then we'll get that sensor reinstalled. Okay, back in the wheel well. That guy's gonna go right on through there and bolt back to the control arm. Okay. 
playing torque. Little bracket starting to, to flex a little bit with its new position here, and I don't want to overdo it, so we're good right there. Okay, our sensor body's coming in. Let's just kind of set this thing up into its position here. We'll get the bolt started. You know, the, the task on this job wasn't to change the sensor. It was all clerical work. Finding the sensor, getting one here in a reasonably timely manner, and then of course, performing these modifications to make it all kind of work. That's where the skill lies with this particular job. And, and I believe that because you see a lot of places you know, the, some of the retail stores where if you've done anything like different to the car, uh, upgraded tie rods or whatever, they don't have the tooling to actually perform the function. If it's not like bone stock, normal, regular components, cut and paste, parts hanging types of situations, people don't know what to do anymore. There's no, uh, there's no creative thought processes at play. And that makes me sad. Okay, I need to get a little wrench on this stud right here to hang on to it so we can uh, get the nut to thread down. It's like a little uh, sway bar link. Little miniature links. Click. There we go. And... Let's go ahead and just get the two, the two bolts that secure this unit to the body. One on the back. You guys can't see, there's stuff in the way. Okay, so now that this is installed. Let's go ahead, back out of here and get the wheels on it. We'll let her down. I, I think we're we're about good here. Uh, unless we get some kind of warning messages from having the sensor back, I, I do believe this is uh, gonna be a success. Kickage. Yeah, how do you guys feel about putting used parts on people's cars in a situation like this? You find that to be acceptable? Or should I have purchased the back-ordered unit from Lexus, which uh, is not available? Like, what do you do? What do you do when you can't buy new parts? Is it okay to put on used parts? How do we warranty used parts? Does the customer have to give consent to used parts, or should they know about it? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. Okay, let's get on in here. Climbing in. Beginning engine starting sequence now. And she is alive. Okay, so we have no warning lights. System appears to be functioning as designed. We have no uh, obvious problems. Let's go out and uh, take a quick test drive. We want to listen for a rattly clunky type of noise from down below. Uh, the customer had complained of a suspension clunk going over bumps. And we had speculated that that dangling sensor arm bracket assembly component was the uh, the cause of the clanking and rattling. So we're just gonna go uh, verify that right now. Hello, blue Jeep. That one got a top in engine reseal, leaking oil and coolant. It's not good. Okay, we've got some bump action in our parking lot here. I don't hear anything. I think we're gonna make a left this time, hit the railroad tracks. Can't catch a traffic break. Yeah, we get a break on that side, and then there's cars on this side. And you get a break on this side, and you get cars from that side. Okay, we're clear left, clear right. Let's rock and roll. So far, so good. I'm also in my head conducting the post service test drive regarding the transmission fluid service make sure she shifts okay. We flushed uh, the trans fluid. You guys weren't looking. But yeah, so far, I think we're good to go, guys, in this particular uh, endeavor on this video. I realize this was a shorter video. 
the bulk of the work on this vehicle was fluid exchanges and I know how that can get a little repetitive over time so I elected to not uh, record our fluid exchanges on this car so having said that I believe I have nothing more to offer you uh, on this particular Lexus other than a thank you for watching this video as always I hope you enjoyed this video if in fact you did enjoy this video please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there and most importantly have yourselves a great day see you guys later in a day in a video in a lexus end of suspension ride height level sensor repair in a transmission Oh, hey, you know, real quick afterthought. So I, I've been saying end of transmission, like as a close outline, you know, and people are thinking that I'm meaning the actual gearbox transmission in the car. Uh, what I'm referring to is the electronical broadcast transmission uh, of this particular video. I'm transmitting this video. So when the video ends, I am ending the transmission that I am in fact transmitting. Words. Re-ending of transmission.